Welcome back to the News at 10. Members of the National Assembly have condemned the killing of a member of the House of Representatives, Olatoye Temitokwe, who was shot dead during the governorship and state houses of assembly elections on March the 9th. Both chambers of the federal legislature suspended sitting in honor of the slain lawmaker. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports. The National Assembly resumes sitting after adjourning for the 2019 general elections to allow members participate in the process. I will take the announcements. In the Green Chamber, the Speaker reads the obituary of a member of the House. Let me announce the date of Honorable Olatoye Temitokwe Sugar, member representing Aikin Yele, Legielu Federal Constituency of Oyo State. He was shot by a known gunman on the 9th of March during the 2019 governorship and state houses of assembly elections and later died in the hospital. Thank you. For the the house holds Christian and Muslim community. prayers for him. And as is customary when a member dies, plenary is suspended and the house adjourns till the next legislative day. Outside the chamber, the speaker signs the condolence register and speaks on the death of the lawmaker. I want to draw the attention of uh, fellow citizens that are um, assassinating people during election or fighting over who should represent people. It really shouldn't be uh, what we should embark upon. Rather, uh, elections should be peaceful and um, when we're aspiring to lead, um, we should do so in the best way and manner possible. It was murder. Uh, and let's call it what it is that led to his death. Uh, he was killed, he was assassinated, he was murdered, whichever way you want to look at it. He should never have come, he should never come to this. In the Red Chamber, the Senate, in solidarity with the Green Chamber, also suspends plenary to honor the late lawmaker. So I want to move that this Senate, in keeping with this tradition and to show respect, to our late colleagues adjourns until tomorrow. When the Senate reconvenes on Wednesday, 13th March, it is expected to begin debate on the 2019 budget. The House of Representatives had passed the budget through second reading before the elections, but the Senate chose not to debate the budget until after the elections. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Well, to some not so cherry news um, again, at least one person has been reported killed by thugs, popularly known as Sarasuka, in Bakaro area of Bauchi State. The police public relations officer in Bauchi State, Kamal Dati, confirmed the incident and he said it happened this morning while the suspects have been arrested and investigations are underway. Kamal received a report that uh, uh, some talks uh, popularly known as Sarasuka came out terrorizing members of the public in the metropolis, uh, especially in the areas of uh, Doya, uh, Abuja Quarter, and the uh, Bakaro area, among others. So, on receipt of the report, uh, the command mobilized its operatives and moved to the area. Uh, we were able to control the situation and uh, made some arrests. Today, I can confirm to you that uh, one person was confirmed dead uh, in connection with that incident. Uh, so far, we arrested nine suspects uh, who are directly involved in that incident. And uh, I'm assuring you we are going to make more arrests uh, uh, concerning the same incident. A Lebanese national, Sagir Ahmed, has been kidnapped by a gunman in Kano State. The victim, who was working with Tractor Construction Company, was abducted at Dangli by Zoo Road Roundabout, where an underpass bridge is currently under construction. The police public relations officer, Abdullahi Haruna, confirmed to Channel's television that two people who were with the victim were shot by the gunman. He said that one of the victims died in Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital, while the other one is currently receiving treatment from gunshot wounds. Meanwhile, the command search and rescue team has already been dispatched to commence investigations into the abduction. The Nigerian army says troops of Operation Sharan Daji have killed 55 suspected armed bandits during an operation in Shinkafi, Anka, and Zulmi local government areas of Zamfara State. A statement by the spokesperson for Operation Sharan Daji, Major Clement Abiade, says the bandits were killed during an exchange of gunfire with the troops inside 
Dambum Forest between February the 15th to March the 11th, 2019. The statement adds that 24 other suspected bandits, informants, rustlers, kidnappers, and logistics suppliers were arrested during the operations and had been handed over to the police for investigation and possible prosecution. It, however, laments that one officer, two soldiers, and members of vigilante groups lost their lives during a gun battle with the bandits. To aviation now, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has given the flying public the assurance that no Boeing 747 MAX 8 is presently in operation in the country. The authority issued a statement in relation to widespread global concerns triggered by the crash of such an aircraft belonging to Ethiopian Airlines in which 157 people were killed at the weekend. The statement reads, quote, The authority, in line with its safety oversight mandate enshrined in the Civil Aviation Act 2006, is consciously monitoring the developments with a view to taking the necessary steps that will enhance the safety of all aircraft in operation within the Nigerian airspace, end of quote. The regulatory agency says it will conclude to ensure that safety regulations and will continue to ensure that such regulations are strictly adhered to. Now, the Nigerian Navy says the fight against insecurity on the country's territorial waters up to the Gulf of Guinea has been successful. The flag officer commanding the Western Naval Command, that's Rear Admiral Obed in Galak, disclosed this while briefing journalists in Lagos on the forthcoming annual regional operation tagged Obangami Express. Obangami, I beg your pardon. He mentioned that the operation in its ninth edition has so far promoted knowledge sharing and regional cooperation, particularly among the African navies. Our correspondent, Loretta Chogo, reports. The media briefing holds on its natural habitat. The flag officer commanding Western Naval Command, Rear Admiral Obed Ngalabak, gives an overview of the annual operation. The Obanga Express 2019 is aimed at assessing and improving Gulf of Guinea law enforcement capacity, promote national and regional security, improve knowledge of African maritime law enforcement partnership, planning and operations, and shape security for assistance efforts. The 2014 edition of the Operation Obangame Express was a huge success for the Nigerian Navy as a pirate chief was arrested at sea and offenders brought to book. But when the same situation reared its head in the 2018 edition, the Nigerian naval ship could not move out of its territorial space. And that has given rise to the question of regional cooperation. In fact, particularly because of that experience, there was a meeting between the chief of naval staff of all the West African uh, countries. It took place in Cotonou, where all the uh, head of navies attended, and uh, an MOU was signed to allow patrolling across borders. So right now, and uh, I think about three or four times we did that. We pursued people into the, the, the uh, Cotonou waters, the Benin Republic waters, and we arrested them. It happened about three times or thereabout. So that issue is no longer a, a challenge. The Nigerian Navy is confident that its presence at sea has reduced incidences of sea piracy, which hitherto was prevalent on the nation's territorial waters. We have maritime representatives across the Gulf of Guinea, and we share information. Some vessels that commit crime in Gabon, we receive information from there that they are coming, and we have tracked them, and when they come, we receive them. So they are actually, it has actually improved our information sharing skills in uh, and synergy between us and the Gulf of Guinea. Obangame, a Cameroonian fang language, which means togetherness, will last for two weeks. The 2019 edition of Operation Obangame Express will feature eight Nigerian naval ships, one ship from the U.S., one from Morocco, and one from Portugal, who will be joining forces with the ships from the Nigerian waters to the Gulf of Guinea. I'm standing right here on the lead ship, which is the NNS Centenary, which will be leading the team. Loretta Chiogo, Channels Television News. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Coyote Ikukiolu. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Ijeoma, and you're welcome to Business News. 
Now, a program of agenda that includes urban development, job creation, improved environment, and less combative tax administration has been set for the incoming administration of Babajide Sonwolu, that's the newly elected governor of Lagos State. Speaking with Channels Television, economist and chief executive officer of financial derivatives company, Mr. Bismarck Rewane says he looks forward to the improvement of living standards and the reduction of Lagos Misery Index. The city of Lagos is different from the state of Lagos. Sonwolu is going to be the governor of the state of Lagos. There's always a misconception that Lagos State is a Lagos metropolis. The Lagos metropolis, the first thing the governor has to do is to define for himself what he's going to do as a state governor and leave Lagos Central or whatever it is to a Tiosa local government and all the others. So that the city, the inner cities are managed by the inner city mayors or chairman of local government, ward men. So you have to now begin to practice federalism at the state level. Also, Lagos has to become less combative in regulatory compliance in terms of tax collection and all that because a lot of people are shifting to Ogun State because they are embattled by the aggressiveness of, of the revenue collection. And also, Lagos has to build a trust surplus. In other words, you need urban renewal, you need proper waste management, you need urban alternative traffic in terms of, uh, what do you call it, uh, ferry and marine waterways, you need portable water. There is no portable water. Lagos, portable water, any city with so many people, that portable water is a luxury. It's a problem. So I know the water system has been privatized, but it has to be made effective. So, you know, and that is why in the end, you have 49 years as the average lifespan of a Lagosian compared to 55, which is a national average. That is critical. So you need to improve life expectancy. You need to improve the level of education. There are 18,000 private schools in Lagos. 18,000. There are more people attending private schools than attending public schools. So we need to improve education. The JAM score in Lagos is much lower than that of the national average. By the time you put everything together, the misery index in Lagos is about almost 56, while the misery index for the national is about 52. So if you are in Lagos, you are more likely to be miserable than across other parts of the country. And as Nigeria ends its general elections, the stock market seems yet to recover from the hangover as the key benchmark index falls by 1.02% on Tuesday. Adidiong Ewang has the rest of the details. Hello and welcome to the stock market report. Now a nasty Tuesday for stocks across nearly all segments of the local buzz as investor sentiments remain weak despite the conclusion of the general elections. Now, the two secondary market indicators of the All Share Index and the equities capitalization hit fresh lows of 31,313.36 and 11.67 trillion naira on increased sell pressure and profits booking. Now, across the major counters indices, the banking index bled the most by 2.26%. Consumer goods was beaten by 1.30% and insurance was down by half a percent. However, volume of share transactions was slightly higher in contrast to Monday session as 219.36 million shares worth 2.92 billion naira were exchanged in over 3,300 transactions. Now still taking a look at the top trades table for the day and you see FBN Holdings, Zenith Bank and Diamond Bank as the most actively traded stocks. And that's a summary of the stock market trading day. I'm Edi Diongi Wang. Back to you, Kaede. Thank you, Edi Diong. Moving on now, investors' reactions to Boeing shares and U.S. markets drag Dow Jones' industrial average, while Asian shares close strongly. Well, here are some figures to illustrate the trading day. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Kayode Okikelu. The news at 10 continues with Ijeoma.
you first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Kyle Day. Still ahead on the news at 10. From London, we go around the world in five. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.